r slash no sleep posted by you slash womack liam 77 i encountered true fear working overnight stock in a grocery store next to a crack house i'm struggling to write this on my broken in uncomfortable sofa i'm having difficulty adjusting the pillows in a way where my back isn't screaming at me i slipped a vertebra in my back years ago and that flares up badly when i stay in a seated position for too long i used to work grocery dairy and frozen at a smaller grocery store next to a crack house. It was okay work that started at 3 a.m. every morning. Teams of two people would break down pallets of food and throw them onto the shelves. Occasionally things would happen. One thing of note is the lights are on a breaker that resets every 30 minutes until 5 a.m. I'm not sure why it's designed this way but I'm assuming it's to save money. From 12 a.m. to 5 a.m. you have to walk into this small pitch black closet and individually hold down buttons to turn on the lights in different sections of the store. You can hear the breaker make a loud grunting noise after holding down the buttons for approximately 3 to 4 seconds. I started to notice breathing on the back of my neck in this room about a year into the job. I always had a weird feeling going into work, and an especially weird confusion when going into this room to turn the lights on. I would feel a little lightheaded and disorientated going from fluorescent lights to pitch black. Standing in the room and holding down the various buttons kind of turned into a game with the rest of my co-workers. We would rock paper, scissors on who was to go into the back and turn the lights on. For the first year I would just feel confused while in the room. You would kind of forget why you were in there while you were holding the buttons down and then the light would snap you out of it. I held this job for years. Throwing groceries on the shelves. Stopping to punch on the lights. Feeling some weird hot breath on my neck and zoning out staring at those buttons only to be rescued by the light. I swear to God out of the corner of my eye I would see it every once in a while, but those lights would come on and break my paralysis. It kind of became like clockwork. Looking back, it feels like we were on autopilot. Stocking the shelves with the same shit every day and turning on the same lights every day. It was the same routine until it wasn't. One night it was me and my assistant for the night, Jane. We were the only two in the store. Jane is kind of like me because we dropped out of college to pursue more academic experiences. Such as how many cases of canned beans we could fit on a shelf because heaven forbid any of them were to go to the back stockroom. Honestly, Jane and I were pretty good at this. We were both in our 20s and gave a shit about finishing the job of stocking the shelves up. I used to move quickly, and she did too. We have a system built into the routine the lights gave us. We would take different aisles and try and race each other, which always made the early morning go by quickly. Next to the aisles, were glass refrigerator doors. Even in one aisle over you could use the reflection to see into the next. We would take turns turning on the lights. I mentioned this store is by a pretty popular crack house. On this particular night one of the regular patrons came by around 3.30 am banging on the glass automatic doors. This guy was red in the face and had jagged, actively bleeding marks in his cheeks. You could see the top of his fingernails were painted red with his blood. Small scabs were observed under his nails. He was sunburnt and screaming at us. This had happened before but typically they just ask for water and blow us off when we tell them where the public drinking fountains are. This dude kept pounding the glass with his fists. It was difficult to figure out what he was screaming about, and I told him to go away. Most of the words kind of blended together and sounded like he was speaking English, but I couldn't understand a word. Of course, the lights went off at 3.30 am. The backup lights are extremely low, and you really have to squint to see any real detail. The outside lights worked just fine though. This dude looked like he was on a stage, silhouetted by the street lights outside. I told myself wasn't worried because I was protected by an 8th inch glass, locked by a small, metal clasp, only I had the key too. Honestly, I was terrified. It would be pretty easy to get in if he wanted to and I really didn't know what he wanted. Jane was already on her way to the back room to turn on the breaker again while I stayed at the front of the store trying to figure out when to call the cops on a crackhead screaming in the middle of the night. Once Jane disappeared into the back room the man straightened up and I actually saw fear in his eyes. He was still screaming shit that made no sense, but he pointed one of his fingers just past my left shoulder. Part of me wanted to turn around and see what he was pointing at, but I started to feel that breath again. That hot ragged breath on my neck gave me chills down my spine. I'm certain my voice cracked when I screamed at him, go the fuck away. Right around then, the fluorescence clicked back on, and my head swam back to the surface. This guy spoke so clearly it scared the shit out of me. That's not her. He turned and walked back across the street into the neighborhood and kept looking over his shoulder. We finally got back to stocking the shelves a couple minutes later in some light conversation. 
Jane didn't really respond she just silently nodded as I told her what happened. We got back to work. Jane was on one aisle, and I was on the other. We got back to the routine. I could kind of see her in the reflection of the frozen section doors. This continued for a while, and I felt my heart slow down as I focused on the work. I wasn't sure what time it was but all of a sudden, I felt my back give out as I picked up a case of juice. My right hand went to my lower back, and I could hardly draw a breath. I saw my coworker in the reflection of the freezer doors, staring at me from the other aisle. She looked haunting. Her hair in front of her face. Her eyes dark, barely visible. Her body looked ridged. Then the lights went off. I couldn't make out her form as well, just a shadow kind of. I yelled out that I messed up my back and the lights turned back on. I couldn't see her. I was so confused and walked my injured back slowly out of my aisle and into hers. She was gone. I looked at the back of the store where she ran out of the double doors leading to the stockroom, 500 feet away. When she saw me shouting for help, she ran up and asked what happened, but I couldn't really answer because of the pain, and what I saw. Over the years my imagination has gone crazy, and I picture her in the freezer door reflection like the girl from the ring. She just stares at me and disappears when the lights come on. I think about what the dude with the cavernous face daily and what he said. Things got so much worse when my boss and I checked the cameras a day later. Jane was in the aisle the whole time. The lights shut off and she just disappears. My manager and I just looked at each other perplexed. In another camera you see her organizing the stockroom almost the entire night. We checked the timestamps and it all lines up. How was there two of her? Then we looked at the camera showing the front doors and the parking lot. The dude just wasn't there. You can just see me staring out the front doors blankly into the parking lot for 5 minutes, not moving at all. When I think back on it, I can still feel the breath on the back of my neck, which makes my back freeze up and re-triggers an injury I sustained at the same job. Two things happened at the same time that night. Something was staring at me in the reflection of those freezer doors, and something turned the lights on. When we checked the cameras and watched Jane clean the back room, one thought crossed my mind as my body tensed up. Who was I talking to all night? Thank <laughs> you.